Hello everyone. Welcome to today's session of Facebook Live. I am Dr. Neha Chaudhary. I am a breast surgeon at Narayana Super Specialty Hospital Havra and Rabindranath Tagore Institute of Cardiac Sciences Kolkata. And today we have Dr. Vivek Agarwala with us. Dr. Vivek is a medical oncologist and hemato oncologist at our center. Hello Dr. Vivek. Hello. So Dr. Vivek would you like to tell us that tell our audience something about what does medical oncology and hemato oncology include and what are the scope of your services yeah uh, hello everyone i am dr vivek agarwala uh, i am uh, the head of the department uh, medical oncology and hemato oncology at uh, narayana super specialty hospital and rabindranath tagore hospital in kolkata so uh, it includes all systemic therapy for all malignancies Uh, including uh, bone marrow transplantation uh, both uh, autologous and allogenic uh, at uh, narayana super specialty hospital howrah as well as at uh, rn tagore uh, hospital in mukundpur okay so uh, dr vivek how long have you been practicing here in kolkata so uh, to tell about me uh, i have been in oncology since almost last 9 uh, years Uh, in 2012 uh, uh, i was at uh, artemis hospital in uh, delhi and then for 5 uh, years i was at uh, uh, tata hospital mumbai and now i am at uh, narayana super specialty hospital uh, since last uh, almost 4 years and uh, since last 3 months we have also started uh, full fledged uh, department at uh, rn tagore hospital Uh, currently uh, in our department we are having uh, four medical oncologists including me and uh, very soon uh, uh, next year we are going to start uh, academic services with uh, uh, dnb students uh, coming for dnb in medical oncology okay that's really nice to hear dr vivek uh, tell me something dr vivek i believe uh, with the amount of chemotherapy that you're giving Uh, how important do you think is uh, cosmesis in oncology for your patients so i think uh, uh, you know uh, in treating our patients for cancer sometimes we uh, forget the ethnic part of it the holistic part of it and uh, uh, cosmetic outcomes are very important in oncology because only with uh, when the patient is looking good they are having you know confidence Uh, to continue the treatment and the compliance to treatment is more uh, they don't have psychological issues and they can lead their life with confidence and with uh, you know without any sort of taboo associated uh, with their own cancer condition so uh, i think cosmetic outcomes are of utmost importance and uh, we should uh, be giving uh, stress to these uh, small things which really matter a lot for our patients i think that is very well said dr vivek now uh, one question that i had is uh, during chemo chemotherapy a lot of your patients they have hair fall so what what is what is your say on it what is your take on it so uh, chemotherapy induced hair fall is uh, known as uh, chemotherapy induced alopecia now uh, not all chemotherapeutic drugs will cause hair loss so this is a myth uh, with a lot of our patients inquiring that uh, they are having uh, you know not having hair loss on certain uh, types of uh, treatment and sometimes they are even doubting whether the treatment is working or not because uh, you know the patients believe that uh, all drugs all chemotherapeutic drugs will cause uh, hair loss so uh, to clear the confusion all drugs will not cause hair loss there are certain drugs like uh, anthracyclines like doxorubicin or uh, you know epirubicin or there are certain drugs like iphosphamide cyclophosphamide or uh, cytosine aerobinoside you know these drugs will cause uh, alopecia in most of the patients which they receive 80 to 90% of patients will have uh, alopecia then there are certain drugs where the amount of alopecia is less for example with taxanes like paclitaxel and docetaxel and with certain platinums like uh, cisplatin carboplatin the hair loss may be you know 50 to 60% of cases and there are certain anti metabolite drugs like vincristine uh, you know like um, uh, methotrexate uh, like 6mp which uh, sometimes doesn't even cause uh, alopecia so alopecia is uh, something 
uh, which is also not uh, uh, you know uniformly across all patients so a patient a on gemcitabine may have alopecia whereas uh, a patient b with gemcitabine may not have alopecia so it also has to do something with uh, the uh, susceptibility of your uh, hair follicles to the chemotherapy induced damage uh, which also you know somebody who already has uh, bad hair follicles is more likely to have hair loss uh, as compared to somebody who has uh, you know good hair follicles okay okay so that was very informative <coughs> dr vivek one more question i have is you must be having a lot of patients in your clinic who are just worried to take chemotherapy just because of the hair fall or they have a lot of insecurities about it because i do i i get a lot of young females young women with breast cancer who say they don't want to take chemotherapy just because of the fear of hair fall so how do you handle them what do you offer them yeah so i totally appreciate uh, this uh, problem dr neha that uh, uh, chemotherapy induced hair loss is a big cosmetic problem and uh, as i said earlier we should give uh, you know at most importance to the looks and the cosmetic outcomes also so one thing i must say that just as i said all drugs don't cause uh, alopecia and nowadays with uh, targeted treatment and with uh, you know uh, immunotherapy so there is no uh, hair fall or no classical alopecia that doesn't happen number 2 uh, chemotherapy induced alopecia is totally reversible so uh, uh, more than 80% of patients will regain their uh, earlier hair follicles which they have lost uh, during chemotherapy so it is a, a temporary problem and uh, it takes around 3 to 4 months uh, of uh, time uh, after chemotherapy when they regain their hair backs although the quality of hair may sometimes may not be same as what it was earlier but uh, it is a temporary problem and therefore uh, there are certain temporary toxicities with chemotherapy but we should look at the uh, permanent outcomes and long term goals when you are treating cancer and not uh, on uh, certain temporary reversible problems uh, thirdly uh, nowadays we, we have uh, techniques uh, which can uh, uh, you know very remarkably reduce the hair loss during chemotherapy and also remarkably uh, decrease the time which is taken to regain the hair and the percentage of the hair that they are uh, regaining. So, uh, with all these uh, measures, uh, I think uh, the chemotherapy induced alopecia is uh, slowly, uh, you know, we will be able to make our patients more confident and it will be slowly, uh, you know, a less uh, uh, problem for our patients. So, um, yeah, so you are talking about the techniques that reduce hair, hair fall. This sounds very interesting and very exciting for our patients. If they can reduce hair fall during chemotherapy, that will be great. So, what can you please elaborate on it? Yeah, so uh, for the first time in Eastern India, now we have scalp cooling technology available at uh, Narayana Super Speciality Hospital. So, this scalp cooling technology is actually a machine uh, which uh, is connected to, to uh, 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 a hair cap. Now, what we do is uh, uh, this hair cap uh, should be worn by the patient uh, at least half an hour to one hour before chemotherapy during the entire uh, during the chemotherapy session and uh, around one hour after the chemotherapy is over. So when you are uh, doing uh, this then it gives you a coverage uh, in the total uh, duration of the treatment and this should be started from the first cycle of uh, chemotherapy itself. So what happens in this cap is uh, uh, the patient, uh, you know, the the uh, the patient's scalp is cooled to sub-zero temperatures. So this, because of this scalp cooling, the uh, uh, the blood flow to the uh, hair follicles uh, decreases drastically, and the, and it also uh, you know uh, uh, causes the hair follicles to transition these hair follicles to, uh, uh, to uh, a state of uh, a steady state uh, and non-proliferative state which leads to decreased uh, exposure of these uh, hair follicles to chemotherapeutic drugs and as a result uh, decreased uh, damage to the hair follicles. So because of this uh, scalp cooling now uh, 
uh, we will be able to uh, reduce uh, uh, hair loss in our patients. Now, there have been uh, multiple global trials as well as a trial, phase 3 randomized trial uh, on scalp cooling being done in India itself at Tata Hospital Mumbai. And most of these trials, the results are very encouraging. What the results show is almost an 80% uh, decrease in the hair loss as well as a, a rapid hair gain uh, uh, after the completion of the chemotherapy. So, uh, and now at Narayana Super Speciality Hospital, uh, we have uh, brought this technology uh, within your reach. Uh, and this is for the first time in Eastern India that uh, this kind of technology is available now. That is really uh, wonderful to hear that uh, we've got this kind of a technology here. A couple of uh, queries that I have is um, how much do you think this uh, is going to increase the cost for the patient? So, the cost is uh, uh, not so much. Uh, what we are currently charging at Narayana Super Speciality Hospital is just uh, uh, 2500 uh, uh, more per chemotherapy session while the scalp cooling is going on. And uh, it is uh, much, much cheaper as to what it is available uh, you know, in other parts of India as well as abroad. Okay, so just uh, 2500 rupees extra for per session i think that's not too much uh, dr vivek there is one question that i had that uh, sub zero temperature of scalp uh, how, do you think it is uncomfortable for the patient or there is any kind of discomfort or and what other complications or issues do you think are there with scalp cooling machine so uh, as you uh, said that in the initial session especially in the first session of uh, the scalp cooling because uh, of the very cold temperature that is uh, given to the scalp. So obviously the page, some of the patients might uh, feel uh, a bit cold. Uh, some of the patients may have chills and uh, rigors because of this uh, cold temperature. Sometimes they have some rashes also. But again these are uh, very temporary. And once they start the treatment with uh, you know it, it, they get used to it. So, it is not so worrisome uh, uh, with us. Another thing is that, that I would advise all patients when you are going for scalp cooling, do wash your uh, scalp very well and don't apply oil because uh, if you are applying oil or if you are not washing, then the conduction of uh, this cold temperature to the scalp is less. So, it may not be effective. Also, it is important that you continue this scalp cooling for each and every session of your chemotherapy till you complete the chemotherapy. And uh, that is the reason why we are mostly advising this uh, treatment uh, for curative intent patients where they are taking chemotherapy in the new adjuvant or the adjuvant setting because there is uh, you know, a completion of chemotherapy. Mm. But if there are women who are very sensitive uh, for, uh, and who are very concerned regarding hair loss, then even in palliative uh, treatment, uh, we can uh, uh, advise without any significant uh, risks. Okay, okay. So it sounds really interesting, really exciting. I hope uh, this is uh, something which a lot of patients will be inspired to go ahead and take. And you know, the women who are worried about uh, hair fall during chemotherapy, this is one respite to them. Uh, thank you, Dr. Vivek. Thank you for talking to us today and. Uh, getting us to know about scalp cooling machine. Yeah, uh, thank you everybody. Uh, just I want to conclude uh, saying that uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, patients, especially uh, women who are uh, afraid of losing their hair uh, while on chemotherapy. And uh, you know, they, there are patients who have even refused treatment because of this cause. So now you don't have to worry because now we have this scalp cooling technology and with this technology, I can assure you that there is an 80% reduced chance of uh, losing hair. And even if you lose, then there is a, a much better chance of regaining their hair, the hair back as soon as possible. And, and you can safely continue your uh, anti-cancer treatment with us with this scalp cooling technology without the fear of losing hair.